Finally, by popular request, here's the Sony XE90, also known as the Bravia X900E in the USA. I'm going to unbox this television and go through the picture settings in the user menu.
Okay, so I've set up the Sony Bravia XE90. This is also marketed as the Bravia X900E in the USA. This is the 65 inch model. The model number in the UK is KD65XE9005. As you can see, I've hooked up SkyQ to the television and I'm going to go through the picture settings to see what's actually available in the user menu. If I press the action menu button, and if I can go to picture, this will bring up the picture menu. And I'm just going to go through all of it. The first thing is the picture mode. And you can select various picture preset that comes with the television. Usually the out of the box preset is the standard mode, which usually have a bluish color temperature. Vivid is the short mode, which is really punchy, but it's overly blue for the home environment. It is only useful for the shop environment. We go down to custom. Of interest to people like yourself will probably be the Cinema Pro and the Cinema Home mode, which are more accurate to the standard that is used within the film and broadcast industry. Um, then another important mode is likely going to be game mode, which will lower the input lag for a more responsive gaming experience. And if we just go back to the standard mode, out of the box standard mode that we were using before. Okay, and then I'll just go through the settings. Let's go into advanced settings directly. So there are five sections here, which is quite good in that Sony has decided that these are the five categories of picture affecting controls. And I think it is a very, very good way of categorizing them. The first one is brightness. And if we go to the brightness control, this determines the light output from this LED LCD television. Now on most other brands, it is usually labeled as backlight, but Sony is deciding to go with brightness, which is technically more correct, but maybe confusing for some viewers who are used to more traditional nomenclature on other TV brands. So brightness determines the light output, contrast determines the digital white level, Gamma is basically how the input signal should be translated to how bright or how dark the light output from the screen will be. Black level, on other TVs, again, this is usually labeled as brightness. But what this control does is to determine the threshold at which you set the video black level. If you set it too high, you'll just be raising the black level of your television unnecessarily because there's just no data beneath. But if you set it too low, then you'll start losing shadow detail. Black adjust is basically just a near black gamma manipulation. Advanced Contrast Enhancer is a dynamic contrast system that can give a punchier picture, but you risk losing shadow and highlight detail. Auto Local Dimming. This TV, I believe, is a direct lit LED TV with full array local dimming. So Auto Local Dimming will engage the full array local dimming backlighting, also known as FALD. Extended dynamic range. This is probably important for HDR. For SDR, I'm, I'll still need to do some testing because I've just unboxed this fresh out of the box without running any tests whatsoever. But I'll still need to test this, but this is probably going to be most important for HDR to get the highest peak brightness that this television is capable of. Next, we move on to the color subsection and Sony still doesn't believe in offering a color management system or CMS on their television. So we are stuck with the global controls of color, which affects the saturation and luminance, and then the hue, which affects the tint of all the colors on a global basis. Color temperature, there are various options, as you can see here, warm, expert one, expert two, cool, neutral. This control basically determines how blue or how red your grayscale will be. And what professional calibrators or even DIY calibrators want to do is to try and select a preset that is closest to the D65 white point. That's the standard that is used in the film and broadcast industry. And then you can fine tune the color temperature or the grayscale or white balance from there by using the advanced color temperature control. And there are six controls here, R gain, stains on red gain, green gain, blue gain, red bias, green bias, and blue bias. 
the game controls affect predominantly the brighter portion of the image. The BIOS controls affect predominantly the darker portion of the image. Sony has also provided us with a 10-point white balance controls, which allows you to adjust each 10% interval. So one, if you set your contrast level and gamma correctly, one usually corresponds to 10% video stimulus, two corresponds to 20%, and so on and so forth. And then live color is just a global color boosting control, which is usually fairly inaccurate. Clarity. Sharpness decides how much edge enhancement is applied to the picture. Reality creation is Sony's proprietary video processing engine that adds noise reduction, edge enhancement, and various other features on an automatic or manual basis. Random noise reduction, digital noise reduction, and these are just basically various spatial or temporal filter. Smooth gradation, I really like this feature. This is a super bit mapping technology that is exclusive to Sony television. What it does is to reduce the posterization very well in, say, 8-bit content. Even in the best 8-bit content, sometimes you can see distinct steps b between what should be smooth gradients. And smooth gradation restores the smoothness of this gradation. Let's move on to motion. Motion Flow is Sony's motion enhancing technology and that's the default option of standard, at least in the standard picture preset, clear, which probably adds a dose of backlight scanning to give higher motion clarity through cinema, which tries to recover 24 frames per second cadence from a 60p signal. And then Custom. Custom further allows you to adjust smoothness and clearness so smoothness is motion compensated frame interpolation. The higher it is, the less jada you'll see, but you may risk introducing interpolation artifacts and so apply effect. Clearness is basically backlight scanning. It activates backlight scanning to improve motion clarity. Film mode is basically film mode interlacing with maybe a dose of frame interpolation added in. And with video options, there are three settings here, HDR mode, HDMI video range, and color space. So with HDR mode, the best choice is definitely auto because the TV will decide whether it will apply the standard traditional SDR gamma or the HDR PQEOTF to the input signal to generate a picture. But if you wish to, for some reason, try to force HDR mode on, then you can just engage it just by switching it on or turning it off. Okay. Uh, HDMI video range is to decide whether full is generally for PC use, 0 to 255. Limited is usually for video use, 16 to 235. And auto, again, is generally the easiest choice and uh, the best choice for most users. Color space, there's auto. And then there's BT 2020, which is the color gamut mode for HDR UHD content. And Adobe RGB, DCI-P3, and BT 709, which is the high definition standard. Let's leave it at auto. And that concludes our exploration of the picture settings on the Sony XE90. I will be spending the next couple of weeks reviewing this television, so if you have any questions about it or if there's anything in particular you want us to test, feel free to leave a comment below. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.